Field, California, picks up his fourth win of the Budweiser Nationals. What a of the phenomenal weekend. job. Yes, of the weekend. <laughs> Not his career. Job. That's the weekend. Incredible. Super late models rolling onto the track right now. We're going to go 40 laps with the fastest dirt cars on the West Coast. Man, John, this is what I live for right here, the late model division. I am particular to these guys. I love these types of cars, and I am pumped to watch this. We saw some great trophy dash action earlier. The heat race is phenomenal. The speeds were high. Now, drivers going to have to change the setup a little bit. This track has gone completely opposite of when they were last on the track. It is slick from top to bottom. We'll see how long it takes for it to get rubbered up, hooked up, and fast again. <clears throat> As we get into this A main event, we're going to get into the lineup for this final A feature. Your front row will look like this from Torrance, California, on the point. Driver to the number 32, B. Cody Laney. And on his outside from Salinas, California, it's Bobby the Hook Fourth. Inside row number two, driving the number four, Pieta Chico, California, that is Richard Pappenhausen. And to his outside will be the number 10 in of Robert Sanders. From El Segundo, California, and number 27 is Ron Bartels. And on his outside from Portland, Oregon, the 111 of Joey Tanner. On the inside of row number four, driving the number 75, that is Rick Coffey. To his outside, the 37 from Auburn, Ray Trimble. Inside row number five from Vacaville, California, the 22G of Paul Gugliamani. And on his outside from Pacascadero, California, the 74 of Dennis Souza. Driving the number C4, that is James Cornelius. And to his outside, the 22X, Randy Schaefer. Inside row number seven from Woodlands, California, the 98 of Kylie Ricardo. And on his outside, the 23 JR of Tyler Lightfoot. Driving the number 27 in, that is Nick Martells out of Marina Del Rey, California. To his outside, the number 23, Mike Lightfoot out of Placerville. And our final row number nine from right here. In Bakersfield, California, the 28G of Clark Gugliamani. And on his outside, the 9 X. This young man has made his way all the way down from Canada. The 9 X of Cody Schlopp. Cody Schulp in the 9 X, taking over the reins for Cheddar Cheese, Jet Reeves, tagging the back of the field for this 18-car, 40-lap A main event feature. So, Corey, here we go, buddy. This is going to be a good one right here. It is front row Cody Laney and Bobby Hogue the fourth. Laney looking for another guitar. He swept, he won last night. Looking to sweep the weekend in the late models. Got a great chance to do it, but outside of him, he's got the winningest driver in Budweiser Nationals history, Bobby Hogue. Looks like we got some problems with it. Ron Bartels out there. The bottom side of turn number two. Looks like he's pointing out, hopefully just pointing out some debris that may be on the track. No, it looks like he's going to get the push from the tow truck. So a brief little moment right here before we get started for this A main event. That is not good for Bartels in the 27 getting a push down the back stretch. Doesn't look like that car is going to fire. He may be making an early exit before the show gets started. I can't tell if that's the, I believe that's the 27, straight up 27 of Ron Bartels. That was in the dash. Yes, it is. The dash car of Bartels. That is the 27 in of Ron Bartels from El Segundo, California. He will exit the racetrack, it looks like. That is too bad for the 27. We'll get these guys lined up and get them turned loose here. For 40 laps of super late model action here from the Budweiser Nationals, the 34th running. And I'll tell you what, that front row is about as good as it's going to get anywhere up and down the western seaboard. Get these guys lined up side by side, bumper to bumper, before we turn them loose. It's Cody Laney and Bobby Hogue the fourth. Your front row. Richard Poppenhausen and Rob Sanders, row number two. That's going to move Rick Coffey up side by side with Joey Tanner, your third row. 
Well, this is it, race fans, the final run of the night. When these guys come out of turn four, I want you to get on your feet and make some noise, wave your hats, let them know you appreciate what they do. We're going late model racing here at the Budweiser Nationals. Great start for Cody Laney in the number 32. Quick to the front, big lead out of turn two down the back stretch. Here comes Bobby Hogue, settles into the number two spot just ahead of the four of Pappenhausen. Pappenhausen on the bottom, challenging for the second spot with Bobby Hogue door to door down the front stretch. Joey Tanner now moves into the number four spot. Tanner rolling around the bottom, trying to get by Pappenhausen. Out of turn number two, let's see who's got the forward bite down the back stretch. Tanner looking very good on the entry. Pappenhausen's got the momentum side of the racetrack. Lap traffic right in front of your leader. Lightfoot off the pace. He'll make his way off the track through turns one and two. Cody Laney running around the top side of the racetrack. Bobby Hogue tried the bottom. It didn't work out for him. Tanner now slides by the four of Richard Pappenhausen. Tanner sits in the third spot. Going to go to work on Bobby Hogue. Number 10, Rob Sanders now in the number five spot just ahead of. That is the number 27 of Bartels. That's Nick Bartels in the 27. Nick Bartels in number 27 working right underneath Rob Sanders down the back. Ready side by side going into turn number three. Now we got a battle on our hands with that number two spot. Here comes Joey Tanner door to door at the stripe with Bobby Hogue the force that they drive down the turns one and two. Unbelievable what Joey Tanner is doing on the bottom of the racetrack. Something we have not seen anybody do in the late models tonight. They've all been around the top and he is the one guy right here in the feature making the bottom work. In the top three with a crate motor in that east side paving 111 of that Joey is. Tanner. That is a very unique chassis. That chassis actually manufactured up in Oregon and Pacific Northwest by Mike Miller, the X-Factor VS1 with a CT525 crate engine. It has been a dominant package up in the Northwest. 14 feature wins to Tanner's credit here in 2019. He has been phenomenal. Right now he finds himself on the bumper, the 32B of Cody Laney sitting right next to Bobby Hogue here on the restart. Bobby Hogue's been up on the high side, and Joey Tanner's been working the bottom side. So it's going to be interesting to see if Tanner can get up to the 32B of Cody Laney, if Cody Laney's going to decide to stay up there on the high side or if he's going to try to come down and run the bottom to try to block that line from the 111 of Joey Tanner from all the way from Portland, Oregon. Joey Tanner will be making the jump to Modifieds next season. He just sold this car a couple of weeks ago. New owner Pete Bound, owner of HG Racing. One of the sponsors tonight putting up $5,000 towards the $6,000 addition to the purse. Hired Joey Tanner to drive the car here for the Budweiser Nationals. I said that's a pretty smart move. I was speaking with Joey Tanner down at Salty's Barbecue and Catering early in the week on Thursday, and he said he picked up multiple A main event victories in that 111 this year up in Oregon. Now he's looking to pick up a Budweiser National guitar, but he's got to get through the 32B of Cody Laney from Torrance, California. Well, he did say this is one of his bucket list races. Isn't it for everyone in any type of car, John? Absolutely. <laughs> if you can get a Bud Light or Budweiser guitar here at the Bakersfield Speedway, that is something nobody can take away from you. That is very, very prestigious in each and every level. As the lights are going out, we're going to get the green flag this time off of turn number four. It is Cody Laney from Torrance, California, all out front by himself. Okay, four down, 36 to go out of turn four, looking for the green flag. We've got it. Cody Laney runs right down to that low groove, takes that line away from Joey Tanner here on the restart, right back to the top of turns one and two. Laney bounces off the curb at the apex of the top of turns one and two, and Joey Tanner trying to get by the two of Hogue as they're in a heated battle with that number two spot. Hogue around the top at a turn four. Tanner moves into the second spot at the stripe, followed by Hogue, Pappenhausen, and Sanders, your top five here on lap number five. Cody Laney all the way up on the high side of turns one and two. You can see his entry high in the three and four once again. Joey Tanner down on the bottom side off of three and four. Bobby Hogue also running the top side off of turn number four. Good battle between Bobby Hogue the fourth and Joey Tanner for that number two spot. But from fourth on back, it is a gaggle of cars, <laughs> and they are getting after it. 
bumper to bumper, door handle to door handle. The top four cars all comfortably running with a lot of room, with the exception of Tanner and, and Bobby Hogue. What a race for the second spot on opposite grooves of the racetrack. Tanner in the gutter, Hogue on the top shelf. Tanner drifting up just a bit right in front of Bobby Hogue on the back straightaway, getting that good arc in the turns three and four. Gets the car set, gets the left tires in the good stuff off of turn number four. And Bobby Hogue is right there in his right rear quarter panel off the stripe. Hogue looks like that top line is really coming in for the 2H as he's now side by side with Tanner. We're now at the advantage into turn number three. Tanner has committed to that low groove, trying to get that car to rotate through the center. It is momentum on the top side as Bobby Hogue takes away that number two spot. You could see that last time by Tanner missed his mark just a bit and got a little off of the groove on the bottom side of the track. And that's why Bobby Hogue was able to get back by and take over that second position once again. Cody Laney already looking at the back side of the, the field. Pair of, you got the one of the light foot cars and the C4 machine just ahead of him along with the 98 of Kylie. This, this could be one of those deals that if you can't get clear him, if you can't clear him fast enough, it's going to hold him up. He goes right around him on the high side. Cody Laney looking totally dominant as of right now. Cody Laney working at least a lane and a half higher than each and every car that is out on the track, and he is not afraid to flirt with disaster up there on that right rear quarter panel right against the fence in one and two. He's coming down the back straightaway, working into turns three and four. Drifts up the cushion, going to put that right rear tire right on the moisture, rockets down the front straightaway. It is absolutely incredible to watch what he is doing on these track conditions, how that car constantly moving forward. Doesn't look like it's uncomfortable in any way, shape, or form. That number 32B, Pete Van Eiderstein owned machine is absolutely perfect. It's a complete lap number 14. Now we have Joey Tanner in un unfamiliar territory, now running the top side around this lap traffic in one to going into turn number one, you can see that car just doesn't quite get into the to the top groove as well as that 2H of Bobby Hogue the fourth as he tries the top side once again in three and four. Bobby Hogue stretches that advantage once again off of turn number four. Joey Tanner seeing what the 32 and the two machines are doing says, you know what, I got to try it. The bottom's not working. Steps it up to the top shelf, puts the right rear in the cushion. And right now, Bobby Hogue is actually inching away from the 111 of Tanner. They run one, two, three, and they have completely separated themselves in the fourth place car, Pappenhausen, who is battling the 27 of Bartels for fourth and fifth. They were side-by-side side battling in front of your leader, Cody Laney. Now he's working his way around the 10 end of the Sandman, Rob Sanders. Rob Sanders down there on the bottom side. Cody Laney once again working his way up to the top, keeping that right rear in the cushion. As he works down the back straightaway, you can see the yellow light on top of that number 32B. That is a token, token note that that is Pat Van Andersen, number 32B, as the yellow light flashes on top of that vehicle as he's leading with 18 laps down, 22 laps to go. Now Tanner going to dive back, back down to the bottom groove to see if he can make something happen. As he battles two lap cars ahead of him. That is Schaefer and Schaefer and Guglielmani. Pair of 22s ahead of the 111. Bobby Ho getting away from him, trying to run down Cody Laney. Cody Laney making easy work of the rest of the field as he just put a lap on the 37 to Trimble, the 9 of Schulp and the 10 of Sanders already going a lap down. And he has been wicked fast here all weekend long. Trouble in turns three and four. Cars sideways had to lift the binders as Pappenhausen and Bartels battling for position. That could have been very bad deal for two cars in our top five. Great heads up driving from Richard Pappenhausen and Nick Bartels in the 27 as they were splitting the C4 of James Cornelius from Tulare, California. Almost catastrophic for your top four runners. Right now, Bartels sits in the number five position. The next car behind him. Trouble for Sanders in turn four, the 10 in. Heavy damage to the back side of Bobby Hogue. The rear spoiler and quarter panel hanging off that car. There had to be contact with the 10 of Sanders. That is a bad deal for Bobby Hogue, who sits in the number two spot. That is not something that Bobby Hogue the fourth wanted to see. That ripped off the right rear spoiler. The it entire... took off the whole quarter panel, part of the rear deck, and half the rear spoiler, John. That's a lot of damage. That's going to change the way that car handles on these dry, slick conditions. That car's going to have to go to the pit area to get that repaired unless he can find a friend out there to get that ran over and they can pull it off of the car 
on the track. If not, he will have to go to the pit area, have that removed, and he will have to tag the back Well, I'll of tell you field. right now, one of the Googly Monty cars, those are team cars, may be looking to do just that. See if they can't get him up and drive over the back side of that metal and pull it off the race car. Bobby Hogue trying the Sawyer method, trying to shake it off, does not want to lose.